Hi, this is Annette with an overview of the environmental impact investing market and a bit of a story in how, in my view, it stands to change the game. There's been two recent reports that have looked into issues around the financing of conservation work. Uh, one called Conservation Finance was authored by Credit Suisse and Investment Bank, WWF and McKinsey, a management consultancy company. And the second was primarily through TNC's NatureVest um, arm with a, a bunch of other authors. They both dealt with similar issues and came to similar conclusions, but I'll, I'll focus in on the Credit Suisse report. It looked at how much money is being spent now around the world um, for biodiversity protection and estimated it at around about 50 billion, so that's around 40 through government and philanthropic sources um, and then around 10 through a variety of investment vehicles like agroforestry and water licensing schemes and the like. So a lot of money. Um, they then acknowledge the difficulty of trying to size how much money is really required but they ended up with an estimate um, of three to four hundred billion per annum um, and quoted a bunch of references as to how they came to that conclusion. Um, so the gap between the money available today and, and what's really required is is pretty massive, two to three hundred billion dollars per annum. So they went on to discuss where could that money come from. Well, the only place that that kind of money is available is in the capital markets and they concluded that it's actually not that much, um, that there'd be sufficient capital available to meet this gap if the main investor segment, so that's high net worth individuals, retail and institutional investors, allocated just 1% of their capital to conservation projects. So it seems like a huge amount, but it's actually a tiny amount compared to the total capital markets. And so their broad conclusion was that there's actually no shortage of investment funds the shortage is in investable projects, having places to put that funding. So they went on to say um, that in their view that the sector, the conservation sector, is quite a ways behind other social sectors in the terms of in the field of impact investing, where a lot more ground has been made already, um, and that collectively we need to increase focus on project management, defining and managing projects, and a measurement measuring the results of those projects. <coughs> um, and within the report they quote um, some ways to go about that and they mention the open standards as a platform for improving that project management and for measuring the impacts of that work. <coughs> so Credit Suisse and McKinsey have just um, produced another report just last month, um, January this in 2016, um, that builds on that earlier report. Um, they've gone into quite a bit more detail, focusing mainly on the, the financing side of it rather than the conservation side. Um, it pro provided a bit more detail about how the vehicles, the funding vehicles would work. They talk of how a range of investors, uh, multiple investors, could put funding into a vehicle managed by a funder of some sort, which would then fund a range of conservation projects. In turn, they would produce returns of various sorts, so uh, real cash flows, financial cash flows, but also conservation impacts, and that, that then, in terms of financial returns and non-financial returns, would flow on back to the investors. They identified what they call some paradigm shifts which need to occur to allow those kind of vehicles to start taking shape. Um, so incubating, scaling, mainstreaming, basically taking projects from very early stages through to um, scaling them up and then mainstreaming the whole concept. And they provide a fair bit of detail behind that. But their conclusion is that um, if those shifts can be made to happen, and they believe they can, um, in total they can provide the gap of funding that they've been talking about, the 200 to $400 billion between now, 2016, and 2020. So really not that far away. Um, so the market's starting to take shape. There's a lot of work to make it happen, but um, there's some really good thought going into just how to make this happen in the conservation space. It's already happening in other social sector areas. So just a bit of the infrastructure that's around to support impact investing. Um, one of the key players is 
the GIN, the Global Impact Investing Network, which is made up of a whole lot of um, uh, funders, investors and funders um, that are researching and providing information about how this market can work. Um, they also provide uh, a set of metrics called IRIS, which help to define how impacts can be measured on, on a whole range of, of different factors. The metrics are all available online if you want to have a look. They also have a bunch of what they call aligned metrics and there's a component within here that was developed a few years ago uh, for land conservation. It's primarily geared at things like uh, land trusts and the like but there's quite a range of metrics already embedded into that system and, and available for use. Um, probably needs some broadening to cover different types of conservation work but there's a pretty good base there to build on. Another component that the GIN put in place is this impact base which is an online database of um, investment funds. It's primarily geared at investors um, so that they can find funds but it's also for fund managers to um, communicate to people about the details about the funds that they're providing. Um, already there's 104 funds in there that are being tagged as being within environmental markets of different types. Just looking at one example to illustrate the concept, this one's operating in Madagascar. Um, it's aiming three types of activities around managing high conservation value areas within Madagascar, uh, some agrofor agroforestry programs and some energy programs that are around reducing deforestation. Um, they've defined a bunch of metrics that they're going to be monitoring their performance against things like uh, greenhouse gas emissions, species, um, protection of ecosystem services, livelihoods and the like. In total they're aiming for $45 million to fund um, these activities in a range of areas um, and importantly the the way the financing, financing vehicle would work is that they basically pay on performance so it's changing the funding model from being traditional philanthropic funding to pay up front for um, a project to be done and uh, this is basically paying for results so really increases the importance of being able to measure for results and, and demonstrate impact. Another um, collaboration within this space is the Conservation Finance Alliance. It um, seems to be going through a bit of a transition right now. It has been well funded in the past. Um, right now WCS is providing the secretariat for it and they recently put a call out they'll be at the, uh, the Environmental Congress in Hawaii in September, the IECN Congress, um, and, and looking for collaborators on, on workshops and the like for that. So that's a quick overview of the environmental impact investing market and, and how it's coming along. Um, it's still playing out obviously and it will play out in all sorts of ways that we don't yet know about. My concern is that we're still struggling to perform well down in this space of today when what we really need to be doing is, is lifting our sights and being able to perform well up in this space because that market's growing and is going to be happening within the next five years.